if you ever get trapped inside the airlock, you can cut the power to it. Because as long as there is no power, ah, I'm trapped. Nope. As long as there's no power, you can open the airlock and force it open with your crowbar. Hello everyone, Thranks is here, and welcome back to Stationers Episode 2, where we are going to continue working on our initial base. Now, one of the things we can do, since this solar panel is in fact not generating anything, is... Oh, I was going to adjust it and tilt it so that it had visibility. Well, it's going to start charging here in a little bit as soon as the sun gets over a certain angle. Unfortunately, I did not bring the tools that are needed for me to work on it. But once we have enough power, we should be able to start getting iron. So that's what we need. Let's go ahead and get our tool out and we'll turn our light on so we can see what we're doing here what is this this is coal so i think we're going to continue mining this up so we'll keep mining up coal so we have something for the generator for when the sun is down let's take a look at what we're doing here 10 coal okay We'll just keep digging this area out here. Now, we still never found some copper, so I would like to use a little bit of the daylight to do that. We're also going to need a good bit more iron, which I've seen a lot of running around our base. So we're going to look for some more iron because we need a good bit of it. Oh, and look at this right here on this mound. Lots of iron. Let's take it. Very good. Look at it all. That's good. So we'll be able to run over and start smelting some of this iron fairly quickly. Since the base is right there, we'll get this iron going while we have sunlight. Um, probably should continue digging. I'm pretty sure the ore continues for a ways. Alright, we are leaving some iron visible for when we come back. All right, and we'll turn our tool off to conserve its battery. Excellent, now, take our 50 iron ore from here. Let's go ahead and turn our light off. I think the sun is high enough now. We'll put the 50 ore in there, turn this on, and smelt. Very good, everything is going. Now we turn back on the auto lathe. We don't have any copper. We do have some iron. We need iron sheets. At least, uh, and one iron frame. Right, we're going to need at least one iron frame. So let's get that set up. Iron frame. We are still smelting the iron that we put in there. And as soon as that's done, we'll be able to put more iron in there. And then we're going to go back out and look for copper, because we really need copper. There we go, 28 iron. Go ahead and smelt. Let's kick off the auto lathe for now. There's no need to use up that electricity. Really what we need is copper. So we absolutely need to find some copper. And the high daylight is pretty much our best chance of finding some. Oh, oh, wait, wait. This could be it. It doesn't look like gold. It looks a little bit like copper. Now we're talking. All right, turn our tool on. And we're going to mine up a bunch of this copper because we need it for cabling. And we're going to need a lot of cabling, so we're just going to continue mining up all of this copper in this area. And then try to recognize where this vein of copper is for our future needs. Only problem is making these little holes here. Now this is becoming more of a hazard to fall into. 
Alright, I don't see any more copper. I'm sure there is some, though. It's popping up on my screen. Alright. There it is. A little bit of copper showing. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy does it. Oh, be careful of those craters. We always carry our suit, or our, our tape, on our back. So that we're not going to get a rip in our suit and be unable to fix it. I was hoping to reveal more of the copper, but I suppose this is as much of it revealed as we could hope for. Okay, that's fine. We'll turn our tool off. We'll head back. So the copper is on the other side of this mini crater here. For future reference. And we're going to take our copper in our hand and immediately start smelting it up. While we still have power. So let's... Smelt, 50 copper, very good. And then over here, the auto lathe, we're going to build one iron frame. Actually, let's go ahead and build a couple. And this one goes right here, boom. So that is everything pretty much blocked up. Oh, look at that, we have a large full battery. So we're gonna put that into our life support and then put the small battery there. So we've effectively recharged the battery in our life support. Let's go ahead and turn this off. These iron frames we're just going to put down here for now, and we need iron sheets. Lots and lots of iron sheets. Coal, we're just going to put the coal in there. We're not going to turn this on. We're going to turn it off for now, so we don't really need the power. Okay, we're going to clear those iron sheets. Now what I would really like to make is... Look at all this stuff. Uh, let's turn this auto lathe off for now. Because I think we can go ahead and, yep, construct the wall, construct the wall. And then we just need our tool belt for that. So let's put our drill back on the belt. And we'll get our tool belt. And then I think we'll just throw down our mining belt. We don't really need it the welding tool which we turn on and there we go boom look at that we have the start of a humble little base here and so now what we're going to do is going to work on setting up our airlock even though we don't really have a lot of the other infrastructure you need we can get a basic airlock set up which is what their intention is here with this no nope, we don't need those organics what we need is uh, all of this. So we're going to start with the airlock kits and... Hmm. Okay, nope, we're going to start with the airlock kits, which we're going to build right here. Now it's important for your airlock that the power is inside the airlock. Because then, if you ever get trapped inside the airlock, you can cut the power to it. Because as long as there is no power... Ah, I'm trapped! Nope. As long as there's no power, you can open the airlock and force it open with your crowbar. Okay. Good deal. Now that we've done that, let us... Switch over here while we have a little bit of power before the power runs out. Okay, the arc or furnace is done, so let's turn it off. And then we're going to go to the auto lathe and build cable coils for half a gram of copper. We're going to make as many as we can. I'm not sure what caused those iron sheets to stand up like that. Let's just knock them over. That's bothering me. Cables. Very good. And it's going to take a little bit of time. We're going to let it make quite a few cables before we try to stop it. Oh, and we're starting to get shadow now, so we're not going to have too much longer before all of this is done. And then we should have... Oh, oh, struggling with the airlock. We have a full small battery over here. We can go ahead and turn that off. There's our moon sunset. Eight cable coils, pretty good. So far, so good. 
I think we'll go ahead and stop this for now. We'll just save our power in case we need it for anything. Um, I think we will go ahead and turn our light on so we can see what we're doing here. Now we're going to need the console and the vent. So let's just grab these. Now on the side of the airlock here, we're going to go ahead and build the console here. And the vent, I'm going to say, let's keep all the power on the same side because it's going to need to go through the roof there. And we're going to have to, we're going to have to, tweak our design a little bit and we'll talk about why here in just a moment and then we're going to need the sensor and what the circuit board okay so the console actually let's okay let's talk about the sensor so the sensor kit we have daylight sensor and then you can scroll through them for different sensors motion sensor gas sensor what we want is a gas sensor data and power are going to come off the left and then it's the same for this console. Let's go ahead and pull our tool up here so we can deconstruct it and I can show you what I'm talking about. So the console, you can do a dual console, um, which it, it reads, let's see, that's just power and data on one side. And then you have power and data separately. So I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. And then you have a monitor. No, but we're going to go with just regular console. And then you have to put a circuit board in it to try to tell it what it's going to be. And it's going to be an airlock, which is why they give us an airlock circuit board to start with. Now, in order for the console to be finished, you have to grab some glass sheets. We're going to take this data disk and put it in our backpack. We'll take these glass sheets here. And voila, we have a console. Very good. Okay, we'll just dump these glass sheets on the ground there. Now, wiring. How to wire this stuff? I think the best bet is going to be to piggyback right off of this. So we're just going to need a straight wire. And then a straight wire, a straight wire don't think this is going to enable us to mess with that right so the airlocks generally have to go through the roof so we're just going to straight straight and then we're going to need to deconstruct one of the panels off of this frame so that we can see it uh, what's in the interior, that is. So let's go ahead and grab our grinder. Uh, no, it's not our grinder. It's our pry bar. Our wrench. Wrench. Okay, now we can see our wires there. As you can see, we'll merge these iron sheets here and throw them down. All right, so now we can kind of see the interior of this little, of this frame here. Um, because what we want is actually to bend in and curve in which I will figure out there we go perfect now after that we need it to let's see if this is easier to access from the inside it actually might be um No, I think we actually have to wrench this down once more, right? Which I do. Right, so we've deconstructed the frame enough that we can go inside of it now. That's that's dandy. Put our wrench away. Oh, I don't think we're going to have the wires. In fact, I know we're not going to have the wires. But we can get it started, and then this one's going to need to be straight, and then that one needs to come down the wall. So a corner. Oh. So close, yet so far away. 
There we go. Just like that. Boom. And now what we can do is we can re-weld that frame. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now with our iron sheets. And we're also going to make more cables. Yep. Go ahead and build cables. All right. So let's get our welder back in our hand. Remember to turn it on. And we're going to construct this frame back together. Perfect. Just remember that you can always deconstruct stuff. If it doesn't seem like you can, it's because you don't have the proper tool, but you can deconstruct everything. Iron frames. Let's see if we can build these out here like this. And then we'll likely have to start mining some of this terrain up because I don't want it to impede my base construction over here. That might be a, that might be enough cables. Seven plus ooh seven total. No, that that likely won't be enough cables. Let's continue manufacturing cables. All right. So the first thing we want is a three-way junction, not a corner, like this, and then a three-way junction here, and then a three-way junction here, because these all need to be set up with power and data. Grab some more coils. Five. I don't think that's going to be enough either, but we'll get started with it. Over here, we're going to need corners like this, and uh, they're going to have to be all different corners, so we're going to have to rotate them like that, like this, and like that. We need power and data kind of all on the same data bus. And let's go ahead and make one more cable for now. That should be good. Let's go ahead and stop you, and we'll turn you off to conserve power. Okay, from here, we're going to need a three-way junction like this, and same but rotated, and then same like this. Ugh, not enough cables. It uses up a lot of extra cables for those unnecessary um intersections so you might think it would be better just to put intersections all over the place to save you time from having to tear up cables later but it ends up being wasteful and you don't want to do it so from here we're going to put that cable there we've almost got the system ready to go it's close the corner cable is going to go like this, and this corner will rotate up like that. Boom, everything is connected. You can see the airlocks have lit up at this point. That's how you know you have power. And at this point, we should stop. There was obviously a small interruption in the power. And from here, let's see, we have... Um, we should just be able to turn on the console. No, it's not configured. Okay, so if you remember, we put a, a disk in our backpack, and that is for, if I can show it to you right there, we're going to insert our configuration disk, which will allow the console to go into configuration mode. Once your console is in configuration mode, you need to identify all of your components. And as you can see, it's showing you everything that is on the network. So let's go exterior airlock. Yep, that is the exterior. Interior airlock. That is the interior. Then we need to control also the vent and the sensor. And now we can turn it off and take the config disk out. And then when we turn it on, boom, airlock. It's been configured. Okay, let us cycle to the interior gas here. So that's going to stop. It's trying to pressurize. There's no air. It's saying, hey, there's no air. What's going on? So cancel pressurization. And it's going to let us in even though there is no air pressure, which is fine, which is fine. Um, let's go ahead and cycle to the exterior, which it should do immediately because no pressure. Very good. We're going to need some piping. So let's say, oh, there's our sun. 
So let's take let's take the construction piping. We'll also take the coil of wire, which we're going to put here. Oh, we're about to have power again. Um, from this point, let's see. What we need to do is set up the piping. So the pipe, if it is not connected to anything, it just assumes it's a sealed pipe at the end. That's it. You know, so so there's really no eventually. OK, so eventually what you want is for all of your piping to be going a certain way. Into like canisters or mixers or sorters. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and give it this straight pipe because what it, this this pipe is sealed. It's just going to basically we're going to pressurize everything uh, here. Let's let's talk about it as we do it actually all right we need the portable tank of oxygen that we're kicking around here somewhere um let's see we're also going to need this air conditioner because it's going to be very cold and even though it's called an air conditioner it is also a heater so let's go ahead and we'll grab that and we need to find our a portable oxygen tank um, to be totally honest, I can't remember. Up oh, there it is. There it is. Nope, we're not going to mess with that. We're going to try to find the handle and grab it and drag it with us. This thing is just full of oxygen. All right, it's going to be a little cramped here in the airlock. Let's make sure we can see what we're doing. Oof, it's going to push us around with the physics. And we're going to cycle to the interior. There we go. And of course it can't pressurize, so we're going to say cancel pressurization and just open the airlock with no pressurization. Oh, we're stuck. Okay, so the portable air conditioner we're going to put here if it'll stop zigging and zagging back and forth. We can go ahead and put our small battery in there for now. We're going to need to make more batteries here before long. Now let's grab our oxygen tank. And let's go ahead and drop it, and we're going to slowly increase the oxygen coming out of here. Mm, doesn't look. Let's let's try to increase it a little bit more. All right, let's decrease it. We should be seeing pressure. If it's depressurizing, we might not have a good seal somewhere. It looks like the air is holding its own. Okay, it doesn't look like we have a leak anywhere. Right, it's registering 5 uh, kilopascals. Let's go ahead and increase it. And let's get a lot of oxygen in here. And we should start to get sound now as we get an atmosphere. Now keep in mind this atmosphere is going to be 100%. Let's turn on the heat and turn the air conditioner mm -hmm. on. There you go. Let's keep increasing it. We're going to start to get sound now because now we actually have air. To make sound happen and that's all of our oxygen you can turn it off it doesn't matter so we're we're close we're not quite where we want to be here but we are warming things up slowly air conditioner pressure should be getting hot. Um, yeah, okay, it's going up slowly but surely. All right, it's not a not a fast air conditioner, but we don't quite have enough air pressure for this to work. Um, so we need some more oxygen. So what we can do is let's go ahead and cycle to the exterior. Yep, pulled the air out, and there we go. Now we can go back out here. 
let's go ahead and turn this auto lathe back on for let's just make a lot of iron frames and the mining belt that's what we need because we picked up hold on let me let me make sure that we have it on us we picked up some oxalite okay so let's cycle to the interior you'll see how this works it takes the air out of this pipe it's trying to vent it's not enough though so we're going to sublimate this oxalite as it slowly fills this area with air and then we're going to do the same over here we're just going to let the oxalite continue to sublimate in our hands it's cooling everything down significantly in here the air is cold the heater will get the job done though eventually and we're just going to try and get the atmosphere up to about 100 kilopascals. And I don't think we're going to quite have enough. It's trying to stabilize everywhere. 72, 73, not bad. Um, but it's not going to be enough. Let's go ahead and turn this off. We'll put this small battery back into here. Hmm. So we're going to need some more oxalite. And uh, it is, it's humble beginnings, but we have an atmosphere in here that we can try to maintain. We're going to need to bring oxalite back with us to come through this airlock because it will not open until it gets up to 100 kilopascals. Let's cycle to the exterior. So it's going to shut that door. It's going to suck all the air out of here into this little pipe and then open this door to let us out. And that is uh, an airlock pretty much that's the ba the most basic of airlocks um let's see what do we have here blue spray paint tracking beacon now they gave us a filter but they gave us a water filter um which i think is really interesting and i'm not sure why they gave us a water filter this is essentially empty though um an air scrubber we could use if we can get some filters for it let's go ahead and we'll just put the air scrubber down for now we'll pick up our tool belt which i think we'll go ahead and leave here oh look at all these frames right so we made all of our iron frames very good this is good 13 iron frames excellent uh now well, the other thing i would like to do is actually kind of get this terrain dug out so that our frames are not being impeded by it and there we have it now let's see we'll turn it off put it back on our belt and pick up our tool belt and move our tool belt over here Wonderful, wonderful. Now we can put our tool away. Let's get our frames out. And we'll start putting frames down. Very good. Those frames are going to have to be dug up a little bit. Iron sheets. Oh, we don't have any, um, any more iron sheets. That could be a problem. Let's get our tool back out. And right now I'm just trying to give us more usable area here. So we're just digging this terrain out so it's not impeding our frames so that we can weld these frames together and get a nice flat floor surface over here to work with. Turn that off. And really what we need to do before the end of the day is locate some iron, which, ooh, could be dangerous walking into the sun. Ooh, oxalite, we, or oxite, oxalite. <laughs> no, no, this is oxite, and we're going to need some to get through our airlock to go back inside, but we shouldn't need to do that for a little bit still. And I think the next step is going to be to make some batteries. We're going to need some more batteries. Everything seems to use batteries, and we need to be able to stuff our battery charger full so we don't have to worry about anything else. All right, and we have plenty of oxide now, which is good. 
turn this off. I'm not sure. I think there's iron right over here on this hill, actually, but let's... Let's go ahead and I think what we'll do... Ooh, no, we're going to pick up the mining drill, turn it off, right? And then we're going to take this silicon, and we're going to smelt the silicon with what power we do have. All right, now food um, has not been put into the game yet. I'm not sure 100% how you would how you would have to do that, being that we're this far, we're many cycles into the game as far as the sun, um, you know, rising and setting, but we are not, we are not very close to actually, actually being able to grow any kind of food. So that, that I can see being a problem. Uh, let's see, we have some iron frames, and then we'll see, we'll get rid of these. We have some iron sheets, rather, as yeah, so we can start welding these frames down. We can at least just weld them once. They don't have to be welded completely to walk on. Once they've been welded once, you can walk on them. So to save our iron frames, we're just going to weld each one of these once. And then here, as well as here. Okay, and now we have all of this usable area here to work with. We could actually look at what we need here to make some better stuff. So one of the other things I would like to make is an electronics printer. And we need more iron and more gold. I'm pretty sure we have the gold. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Yes, we do. So we can put the gold in there, 14 grams. We'll turn off the auto lathe to try to conserve power. Now, eventually, because these have data and everything, you can rig these up to a console and control them remotely. As far as I understand, you can set up different logic for them and stuff, and you can set up shoots to move stuff around. So the game has an incredible amount of complexity and depth, despite being very early access. And uh, that's, that's pretty exciting. Here, I think as soon as we smelt that gold, we're going to turn right around and smelt this copper. And that's going to be where we wrap up the episode. So the one thing that I will say... Let's go ahead and turn the furnace off. Yeah, off. The one thing that I will say is about your airlock. Um, you might be able to get to the proper pressure a little easier. If you are, here we'll cycle to the interior. Um, but what you need to do is you need to get to this meter to be full, which is about 100 kilopascals. So as you can see, as the oxide starts sublimating into oxygen, it's going to try to fill everything up. But once you get up to about 100 kilopascals, um, temperature or pressure saturated throughout throughout the whole the whole of your pressurized area. Ooh, we should turn this charger on. I don't know why I turned that off. There, you can see here it's trying to. We might need a little bit more. Let's grab a little bit more. We'll let it sublimate as well. Trying to let the air pressure equalize here. So you can see it's at 100. Uh, 99. Let's pull out a little bit more of this oxide here. And we'll have to check the uh, atmosphere because there are contaminants in the oxide. It's not 100% oxygen, but we can switch our tablet over. We can switch our tablet over to see what type of pollutants were in the oxide that might now be in our atmosphere that we will have to figure out. Uh, how to filter out. And we'll put this large battery in there to charge while we use a small battery for our suit. And once you have that done, you'll be able to see now we can cycle to the exterior. It says 106. It only needs to get to 100 or 101, I believe. So it's going to take all that air. Now we're out. And now we won't need any oxide to go back in. We can cycle 
and it should let all the air back out of the pipe. And boom, that is a functioning airlock right there. I'm not sure why the pressure is flowing that way other than it's just equalizing. Oh, because it went to 101 and yeah, this is at 105. Okay. That makes sense. Well, that's going to be where we wrap up this episode. We don't have any lights. We don't have anything set up in here. And we definitely don't have any extra batteries to run our air conditioner because it's incredibly cold in here. So even though we can breathe and we don't know it's in the atmosphere, it's still too cold. So we're going to have to stay in our suit. But we have a functioning airlock. And that is a good start. So this has been Stationers Episode 2 basically how to construct a simple airlock out of the materials they give you at the beginning of the base. Keep in mind, if you build a building this large, you're going to need extra oxide. Your oxygen tank won't be enough. And there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've had a good time watching because as always, I've had a good time playing. So come back next time as we're going to be going on a heavy mining expedition. And we just lost power to the airlock so now we can't get back inside but that's okay we don't need to all our stuff is out here but until next time take care <laughs>